In this video, we're going to add and subtract rational expressions, which already have a common denominator. Now, we know once we have a common denominator, all we have to do is add numerators and keep the denominator. That's just from adding and subtracting regular fractions. Well, it works exactly the same way with rational expressions, with one thing we have to watch out for, and that's when we're subtracting. We will first distribute the negative, and that's to make sure we don't make a sign error, because that negative goes through the entire numerator, not just the first term. And then, of course, at the end, as with any fraction or rational expression, we must make sure we don't forget to reduce our final result. So when we see x squared plus 4x over x squared minus 2x minus 15, adding x plus 6 over x squared minus 2x plus 15, we're really excited because we see we already have a common denominator. That makes this problem really easy. All we have to do is add the numerators and keep that common denominator. So we've got an x squared in the numerator. Combining like terms, 4x plus x is plus 5x, and then finally, there's this plus 6 over the common denominator of x squared minus 2x minus 15. Now, we've added them together, but we always want to make sure our final answer is reduced. Some will reduce and some will not, and so the only way to tell is to factor it so we can divide out common factors. So let's see if this factors. In the numerator, x squared is x times x, and because we have a 1 in front, we want to multiply to 6, same sign, and add to 5. Same sign, that's important, because it's going to have to be 2 times 3. 6 and 1 won't work, because those would have different signs. Both adding to give us the positive 5. In the denominator, x squared is x times x, and again, because we have a 1 in front, we want to multiply to negative 15, different signs this time, and add to negative 2. Well, 15 is 5 times 3, and if the 5 is negative and the 3 is positive, we get that middle term like we wanted. And as it turns out, this one does reduce. The x plus 3's do divide out, which leave us with just x plus 2 over the x minus 5 for our final solution. Let's try another example. In the second example, again, you'll notice we've got that common denominator that we want, so we get really excited about that. We're also going to notice that because this is minus, we're going to distribute that negative through, make it negative 6 and negative 5. Change the signs on both terms. What we're really doing is adding the opposite as we distribute that negative through the entire numerator. Very important. Now, we simply have to combine like terms as we add together x squared, 2x, and a negative 6x is negative 4x, and then finally, we've got a negative 5 at the end over our common denominator of 2x squared minus 9x, minus 5. Again, we always want to check, can we reduce? Can we reduce? The only way to reduce is to factor first. x squared is x times x. We want to multiply to 5 and add to 4 with different signs. So 5 times 1, if the 5 is negative and the 1 is positive, that works. In the denominator, first times first is first. The only way to get 2x squared is 2x times x. And again, we want to multiply to 5, so maybe 5 times 1 again. Different signs, but we want them to add to negative 9. That's going to give us 2x and 5x. Not going to get negative 9 from that. Maybe if we switch the 5 and 1. Five and one. Oops. Got to make sure you actually switch them when you say you're going to switch them. That's important. Okay, five and one. There we go. So now we've got two x times one is ten x, and 
1 times x is 1x. We can get the negative 9 if the 10x is negative and the 1x is positive. And now that it's factored, we can divide out the common factor of x minus 5 to get our final answer, x plus 1 over 2x plus 1. Add the numerators, keep the denominators, make sure you've distributed the negative before you start anything, and then reduce your final answer.